you, you got to spend the same amount, aren't you? Well, we're going to make sure that the spending is done by the right people to control what they get out of healthcare, because it's but, it's individuals. One of one of the. But you're not going to reduce the size of the um, state spending then. If in issues it. like health, no, yeah. we're not, because we think it's important that people do have access to health services. But what we are going to do is ensure that the right people are spending that money, so the money goes further, yeah. and that, that, that will restrain the future growth in our health budget. It's very difficult just to, to cut a budget that people rely on. That's not what we're saying. But, but surely it would do better if it, if it was just a bit more bold and a bit more sort of clearly differentiated, because that's what Act did when it was getting 6-7% back in the 1990s and early 2000s, it said these radically different things, whereas today it's still, still sounding like you're just tinkering. Uh, well, well, I mean, I, I disagree. I mean, there's a lot of policies where we're quite different from national. Uh, take superannuation, for example. Yeah. You know, a lot of the big debt so problems get rid in of superannuation? Zealand, no, 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 move, move the age of entitlement up but that's from Labor 65 Party to 67. So you're it, not it even is. that different to Labour Party. It is, it is Labour Party policy. Indeed, they, they stole the policy from us. We've been advocating for that but for years. If, if, you, if your policy can be so easily stolen by the Labour Party, it must suggest the Act are pretty centrist and pretty moderate these days. Well, well I, think there's, I think there's two major differences. So the first is, is that the big problem for New Zealand over the next 10 years yeah. is getting long-term debt under control and, and controlling government expenditure but, to allow us but that just taxes. sounds like John Key. That's what he'd say. That's what, that's what um, he'd say. It's not what he does, uh, 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 though, and that's the difference. So is that the problem with Act, that you say the same things as Labour and National, but you would really do them? Oh, I, I suppose that's part of it. But, but let's take health, for example, or yeah. let's take superannuation. The problem is the long-term spending track. So a lot of people talk about the ageing population, yeah. and, and there are obvious issues there with, with superannuation. Yeah. But the bigger issue there is actually with health. Yeah. And so what we've got to do is ensure that for each dollar we're spending on health, we're getting more, out, more value out of it. And we think that, that the best way to do that is rather than give the money to, to bureaucrats in Wellington spend, is actually to give it to a health funding authority or give it back to people so that we don't actually have to increase those budgets in the way that Labour and National will be forced to because they're not dealing with the system. Similarly, in superannuation, you know, we, need to, we need to actually start moving the age and we need to move it faster than Labour are. So Labour are talking about moving it for yeah. the first time in nine years. Yeah. Uh, and essentially by the time it gets to 67, the baby boomers will have already retired. Yeah. So but we do need to move it faster, but on all these so things, we are different to yeah, Labour and National. You're only issues. kind of different, you might see it as better, but you're not like, it's not like a litmus test, which we talk about in political science, where there's two distinctly different things, you're either for something and against something. You're for better management of the economy and you know, maybe less spending, but you don't say, we're going to get rid of superannuation or we're going to, um, you know, do you know what I mean? And that's why I wonder if Act's sort of failing to actually get any ground. Well, well, I mean, there is a party that's talking about getting rid of superannuation. That's yeah. the Libertarians. Yeah. Uh, they're not particularly uh, successful. Right. Um, in, in terms so is, of... Is that what Act's scared of, being like the Libertarians? <laughs> no, no. I mean, look, we definitely have a very different vision to National and Labour. Uh, it's essentially, you know, they, they can talk. And indeed, Bill English does. He talks a very hard game about, mm. you know, the track of government expenditure. But the reality is, is National have, in fact, increased that. Um, so when we talk about uh, actually restraining the growth in government, we actually mean it. But what about, rather than just restraining it, what about totally reversing it? Like, you know, well, um, well, if you look at, uh, the, at the bill that Act has before Parliament, yeah. uh, which would cap government expenditure at current level and adjust it only for population and inflation growth. Now, given that the economy is expected to grow faster mm. than both of those things, the share of the economy that's but, directed towards government expenditure will in fact be reduced. But that's it. something probably National could sign up to. That sort of well, thing. well, they haven't so far. They've agreed to, to support it to first reading. Which they haven't committed just, after that. Yeah, but again, it doesn't give any strong signals to people that are on the right that think everything's all a bit too centrist, that there's this party that's completely different. Because, I mean, National's incredibly centrist at the moment. And oh, without you, a doubt. You guys should be just doing incredibly well, don't you think? Because there's no one on the right with all the space on the right of the spectrum. I, I think part of the problem is that National is talking a lot harsher than they're actually delivering. Right. Uh, you know, if you look at the difference between National and Labour, you know, on the economy, which is, which is what uh, apparently the big difference between National and Labour is, they pretty much mm. agree on most of the other policy areas. Uh, you know, you have one proposing a capital gains tax, uh, and pushing up uh, the age of superannuation. You have the other one talking about asset sales. I mean, those are minor, those are minor things to yeah. drive New Zealand's yeah. economic growth. Yeah, I think you're probably right. So what would ACT sell? Well, 
In terms of in terms uh, of assets, SOEs, yeah, because National's got this, you know, halfway measure. Yeah. What would you, what would you sell? Uh, so, so we'd sell all SOEs. All that, SOEs, including. So, so, so it provided that they could operate in a competitive environment. Yeah. So something like Transpower, for example, yeah. can't because it's a natural sure. monopoly. Yeah. But all those that exist in competitive markets, we'd sell it, it definitely. So TVNZ, Radio New Zealand. Yep. Um, Post Office, New Zealand Post. Yep. Okay. Yep, no, all, so all those... Why don't you talk about those sort of things? Because that sounds a bit more bolder. Well, well is we that do. I is mean, that... I, was, I was in a, a, a debate last night that was broadcast nationwide. I talked about the benefits of selling those assets. Uh, and, and Bill English tried to defend uh, against that idea by talking about the importance of the government having a majority stake. But, you know, if you look at the figures mm -hmm. and if you ask most economists and you look at what most countries are doing, they realise that governments aren't particularly good at running those assets. And that's actually what National's plan does, is it sells a minority stake, but it won't bring any of the benefits that actually okay. come from selling those state-owned assets. Okay. Um, now, what about, what about zoning, school zoning? Because um, I understand in the last few years, ACT haven't been very uh, strong on op opposing zoning, because you used to, ACT used to. What about now? Uh, yeah, so, so our uh, education policy is essentially a voucher program, yeah. uh, so the money that, uh, that you pay in taxes will essentially follow your child to any school that you send them to. Mm. So if that's a, a private school, uh, mm. if it's an integrated school, if it's a public school, the money will follow them. So there's no zoning at all then? Yeah, and under that system, there's no need to zone because you know you, you just send the, your child to the school of your choice. There is an issue at the moment where if you accept out of zone students, yeah. schools actually receive less money uh, for those students, so they don't get the property funding for those students. Right. So ACT would give them that funding. That's right, and and, and and essentially what happens is you know if you want to increase the size of your school, the government's saying well you can't increase the size by accepting more out of zone students. Okay. Uh, and so that discourages successful schools but from expanding and taking more You'd pupils. be spending more money than other parties in that case. Well, well, actually you wouldn't, because all you need to do is alter the property funding that schools receive and make it equal across all students. So, so the actual money that schools receive would essentially be the same. You'd be spending the same amount, right. but you'd be receiving it on an equal per pupil basis. So you'd take, basis. you'd take it off other schools? Essentially. Well, in terms of those schools which uh, don't accept out of zone students, they do receive more, more money at the moment, uh, and that's to allow them to expand. We're saying if, if you can expand and if you want to expand, it shouldn't matter where you take the students from and we'll right. fund you equally. And we will do that by redistributing the money from the schools that don't take out of zone students to ensure that all schools can expand. Okay. What about social issues? Um, ACT's been a kind of a bit ambiguous about social issues, such as on the law and order thing, because they used to be a lot more social liberal, in my view, and I'm wondering if you are kind of in the social liberal wing. Um, so there's a few questions that we normally ask people in these um, discussions. Well, gay marriage, for example, and I know you've talked a lot about gay issues lately, and perhaps we'll come to that, but should we have gay marriage? Oh, I, absolutely. Um, I, I think there is a legitimate debate over how you uh, go about actually creating that equality in the law. Uh, and I think the Greens actually have proposed that what you should have is you should just have one type of, of uh, essentially relationship institution that should be a civil union. Uh, and if, if so, abolish marriage. And, and then you know, if a church wants to hold a ceremony and say yeah. you're now married in the eyes of this church, that's fine. Uh, and I think the reason for that is that you know, if, if you made it just one institution, that institution was marriage. Mm. A lot of people who aren't religious wouldn't necessarily feel like they should get married because they see it as a religious mm. institution. So I think there's a legitimate debate over whether yeah. we should allow people to but, have a civil union and a marriage. But that's or, kind of what you favour, that sort of system? Yeah, I think probably the best way is the state to, to recognise one type of relationship yeah. that's open to everyone, and then churches can be free to hold their own okay. ceremonies and, and say this is a marriage. Okay, so that, does that mean abolish marriage and make civil unions the main relationship? Yeah, I, I think that's probably the best way. Yeah. Um, I'd also be open to the idea of allowing people to have a civil union and, a mar a and alternatively uh, get married. Uh, but just allowing that equally. Um, yep. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of, I think there's actually merit in the green proposal, mm. uh, but I'd support any measure to extend equality in regards okay. to relationships. How about gay adoption? Gay there's adoption. A question from the Twitter stream. Your take on gay adoption laws, should gay couples be allowed to adopt children? Absolutely. I mean, at the moment in the Adoption Act, it's, it's really bizarre. So uh, married couples can, can uh, adopt children. Uh, de facto heterosexual couples can adopt children. Single males can adopt children, uh, but, but if, you're, if you have a civil union uh, with a, a same-sex partner, you're not allowed to. And that's, that's totally uh, arbitrary and backwards, uh, support gay adoption fully. So, 
Yeah, on, on issues of gay politics, I guess you've made a, a bit of a name by talking about Trevor Mallard and his um, the sort of language he uses in Parliament, um, you know, using some disparaging terms against gay politicians. Um, so do you think that makes him a homophobe? Uh, well, what I actually said is that the comments were homophobic. Right. So, so uh, the, the context was, was a meeting in Wellington uh, held by, by Rainbow Wellington. Mm. Uh, and what happened is someone confronted me with a, with a comment uh, made by John Banks. And I said, oh, I disagreed with that comment. Mm. Uh, and I, you know, I, I thought it was disrespectful uh, that he made that comment. And then I, I raised the fact that you know, all parties have elements in them that um, the, the people at that meeting would right. disagree with in reference to the Trevor Mallard comment. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, Charles Cheval and, and Grant Robertson actually denied those comments were ever made. Mm. Um, and, and that was unfortunate because, you know, it's important to recognise those elements in your party. Uh, and if you disagree with them, to say you disagree with them, I think. Um, and, and Kevin Hay, the Green MP, actually came up to me afterwards and apologised for not, for not coming out and saying, actually, those comments were said in Parliament. Uh, I've been there and, and Stephen's right. Um, but, but really, I mean, the, the issue there was... You know, if there are elements in your party you disagree with, you should be willing to openly disagree with them. Mm. Okay. Um, so, yep. Sorry. Speaking of elements in the party you don't agree with, there's another question in the Twitter stream. Do you think the rolling of Rodney Hyde was necessary or unfortunate, given that you now have John Banks that you're relying on to get into Parliament? Uh, it's an interesting question. I mean, I, I, I really uh, support Dr. Brash. Uh, I think he's a, an excellent leader. Um, I, and I think, indeed, like, he has the skills that are necessary at the moment. Uh, to turn around the economic situation. Uh, in terms of the John Banks aspect, uh, I, I mean, my hope uh, is actually that in these, in these last sort of three and a half weeks that uh, as people realise the message that we're different to, uh, to National, that, that they'll jump on board and we won't actually need John Banks to bring us into Parliament because we'll, we'll get through the 5%. Um, but I mean, you know, in terms of, in terms of John Banks, uh, John and I agree on a lot of things. Um, so we, we agree essentially uh, about the economic issues facing New Zealand uh, and that's really the unifying theme of the ACT Party I think. Uh, it is uh, typically in those, in those areas and, and we've allowed members to disagree over those social policy areas like most parties so other sounds, than the that, Greens. That sounds do. like a bit of a vote of no confidence in um, your candidate in Epsom that you're saying you don't want to rely on that. Oh, um, no, 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 I'm saying, oh, you know, obviously it would be even better if we, yeah. if we got through 5%. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think John Banks will win Epsom. I, I support John Banks and Epsom. Uh, as I say, John and I agree on the overwhelming majority of, of issues that but the he's not, Party But he's not sort like. of your, your traditional ACT Party um, candidate or, or member, because he comes from this national sort of background of being quite socially conservative and not very radical, not very economically liberal. So... Well, I mean, you know, when, when John was a member of the National Party, you know, that was quite a long time ago. Mm. And, you know, if you look at the National Party, I mean, you know, the reality is we've got John Banks, we've got Don Brash, previous mm. members of the mm. National Party. And I don't think that's because necessarily they've changed. I think it's actually because the National Party have left them. Sure. So they've moved to the centre, and now they realise that, that they're actually the, the things that they're pushing for, the National Party values of things like freedom, choice, yeah. lower taxes, the only party actually talking about that is the ACT Party.